Multicolor 3D printing, no purge blocks. This is the Cetus 2 from Tier Time, a crowdfunded 3D printer with the goal of multi-material and multi-color 3D printing with no purge blocks. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were raised between Kickstarter and Indiegogo for this machine, and the Cetus brand from Tier Time has been around for quite some time. In fact, Angus over at Maker's Muse has many videos on the Cetus, the original one and the different revisions that they've put out. The Cetus 2 keeps the cantilever design from the original Cetus, but it grows in size, weight, and build volume. It's 300 millimeters on X, 200 millimeters on Y, and 300 millimeters on Z or Z, and it's got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and it uses that to do auto bed leveling. The trick the Cetus 2 has up its sleeve is that it does on the fly material switching. It's able to do this because two extruders feed filaments at an angle to nearly the tip of the nozzle where they meet. This means that if material A is printing and material B needs to print, it's a very small amount of retraction that's needed to get the first one out of the way so the second one can lay down. The speed of switching filaments and with the space where the filaments come together being so close to the tip of the nozzle, it does mean, for the most part, you can 3D print with this machine using multi-material or multi-color and not need a purge block. What? However, that's not always the case. I started with demo prints on the SD card, and when printing these, I used the two PLA filaments that Tier Time gave to me with the machine. This machine was sent to me from the desk of a Tier Time engineer, so these models that I'm showing you may not be on the SD card if you're a backer and you receive this machine. The Cetus 2 demo prints from the SD card looked fantastic. I was really impressed with the print quality right out of the gate. And I could see lots of solid colors from the material and lots of areas where the material was able to do the on-the-fly switching. Tier Time says that it can do material mixing, but because of where the materials meet at the tip of the nozzle, it's not so much mixing materials as it is extruding something that is a co-extrusion. I did use UpStudio from Tier Time to slice my own models, and it does do a good job, but it really does feel overly complex for no reason. And I was able to get some decent prints using the filaments that they provided, and I was also able to swap in my own filaments and get prints as well. For example, white and black of my own choosing. They very much needed a purge block, or well, to put it fairly, the white and black that I chose very much needed a purge block. I swapped in silver for the white, and in doing prints, visually they looked really cool, but you could tell I still very much needed a purge block with that two material combination. I tried my hand at a three color model. So extruder one is color one, and extruder two is color two. In Up Studio, extruder three is defined as 50% from one and 50% from two, and that's what creates that mix, or should I say, that co-extrusion. The print that I tried, the Crystal Dragon from Cinderwing 3D, looked incredible, and I was really happy with the results. Now, the print was quite hairy from the wisps, and that's because, obviously, tuning the temperature and the retraction didn't happen, but it was nothing a heat gun couldn't solve. And believe me, it's probably one of my favorite dragon prints to date. One final experiment was to print a Benchy, double in size, but to use two different Matter Hackers Quantum co-extrusion filaments. And if I chose extruder three, which is 50% from one and 50% from the other, it means I created a co-co-extrusion filament. So a co-co-extrusion filament essentially means it's four colors, and I got myself a four-color Benchy. One thing to note in printing this model, even though it looks okay, you can tell there are some problems 
And I think some of that was because the cooling fan did not turn on. I did have it enabled in the slicer, but for some reason it just didn't want to turn on. So where are we at the end of all of this? Well, it's a really neat concept and the print quality from this machine is good. You know, if you think about it, it's sort of a new way to breathe some life into some old models. You can take some old STLs that you have and print them in a new fun way using this machine. If you think about it, no purge block does mean less waste. And if you think about it, no purge block means faster print times. And so if you can find models that you can print with this, Without a purge block, you're winning on at least two fronts. The machine does have linear rails on X and Y and two very beefy linear bearings on Z or Z. It's built from steel and it is robust. This machine, if you put it somewhere, it's not moving, ever. Unfortunately, it's not all unicorn farts yeah. and rainbows at this point. There are some things that tier time must address in my opinion. And the big elephant in the room at this point is the hardware is severely crippled by software. The UI on the touchscreen is awful. Just awful. There is no way to move an axis. You can't move X, Y, or Z or Z from the touchscreen. What? You also can't set temperatures to preheat the nozzle or the bed or you just can't preheat the nozzle unless you follow this cryptic escape room style puzzle of button presses for one and two and extruding and retracting. Once you hear the beep though, essentially the escape room is passed and you can load or unload your filament. Tier time does say multi-material, but there should be a little asterisk next to that. There are two heaters, there are two extruders, feeding filament to two heaters, but the two heaters are connected to the same nozzle. So if you feed through two filaments that don't have a similar melt profile, you're gonna run into issues. Last but not least, there is a hardware concern. There is a cable in the back and it's not locked into place. And when the Z or Z axis moves up or down, it rubs against the filament spool that's over on the far side of the machine. And I had it where rubbing over that filament spool actually pulled the connector out slightly, which then severed the connection for some things. And it took a little bit of troubleshooting of not moving in order for me to figure out what was going on. And I have since put some blue tape there and that seems to work, but tier time should really invest in a locking connector at that location. Well, there you go. That's the Cetus 2 from Tier Time, and that's my experience with it so far. Again, this is not a review. It's a look at some interesting technology. This was kickstarted. This was Indiegogo'd. It was not something that I backed, but many did. This is a preview of what you could see, but because it is crowdfunded, there's a good chance what's on my desk here won't be what you receive as a backer. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this machine, on this technology, what it means to have a co-extrusion filament made while printing. I think it's an interesting concept and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I should print on this machine next. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, co-extrude all the filaments. <laughs> and as always, high five.